So what do I love about the, the southeast region of Tasmania is that it's uh, only sort of just over an hour's drive out of Hobart. Um, it's a really nice drive through the farmland, through to Buckland, and then you hit the Prosser River. Beautiful coastal drive. Um, and then you come out onto these white sandy beaches, blue waters, Mariah Island behind us to Triabunna, uh, and then right down to the south, the Forestier Peninsula, down into the Tasman Peninsula. So it's a beautiful region. So what I love about Richmond and the Coal River Valley region is that it's a beautiful area that's steeped in history, it has wonderful produce, and there's some fantastic people that live and are so proud of this area. I really think it speaks for itself, in fact, um, because of the natural environment that is here for us. I also think the communities are really strong here on the southern part of Tasmania. Small little villages and townships, everyone seems to know everyone. And having said that, I think there's also a good work-life balance here for people living um, and working in Tasmania and the southern area. Well, it's quite a spectacular area, Donnelly area. It's a, a peaceful little area, um, great community, lots of industry happening in the area as in small business industry with vineyards and uh, restaurants and little cafes and there's an abalone farm and um, the oyster industry is probably the biggest employer of the Donnelly area. So Mariah Island uh, I think it is one of the jewels in, uh, in the Tasmanian crown. It's a beautiful spot just off the, uh, the coast of Tasmania and it's really like a condensed version of Tasmania. So you've got white sandy beaches, beautiful towering cliffs, um, and the history is just amazing. It's accessible by boat. So a uh, public ferry leaves from Triabunna. It's about a half hour boat ride to Darlington, which is the um, northern end of the island. I love the Tasman Peninsula because it's an hour away from the capital city. Um, it is spectacular scenery, great tourism experiences, and again, it's only an hour from Hobart and has this brutal and complex history as well. Probably the obvious, the natural beauty, dramatic coastlines, beautiful beaches where you're often the only person that you'll see, um, great access to wildlife, sea life, sunsets, sunrises across the water. It's just the natural beauty for me that's the highlight of the Tasman region. So I like to think of Eagle Hawk Neck as a bit of a tapestry or a kaleidoscope. It's, it's made up of so many different beautiful features and parts. It's part history, it's part national park and the great thing is that as soon as you start journeying down that road, um, the winding road, you'll come across beautiful features that you can stop and enjoy. Um, I always recommend that people stop off at tessellated pavement because it's only a few steps and the next thing you know it looks as if the ocean beneath your feet has been paved. Then of course you've got Dewtown which is a real treasure. Dewtown started off as a little shack town which I think is the heart and soul of this area. Every single one of the houses in that area has a special name. We've got Dr Doolittle and of course we've got Make Do. We even have a tiny fish and chip van which is really iconic in the original local fish and chippery of the area which is great and that's of course called Doolicious. I'm really heartbroken that I, I'm not actually in Town because I don't get a do name as much as I try. The locals won't let me have it. Well, we're really spoilt in South East Tasmania. There's so many accessible waterways and to me, um, I'm sort of drawn to the water personally. Kayaking opportunities, getting out on the water in boats, there's so many places to do that. The three major um, points that tend to be quite famous here on the Tasman Peninsula is Cape Hoy, Pillar and Rao. Um, and they're made of Jurassic Dolerite. And um, they're a fantastic way either standing on top of them or paddling or being in a boat underneath them. Um, they're the tallest sea cliffs in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so a huge highlight for this area. The settlement had easy access from Hobart and with no road infrastructure, the way they came was by a boat and they sailed into this naturally deep harbour, which is why it's popular with cruise ships today. There was an abundant supply of timber, so it started its life as the timber station that supplied timber for the whole colony. The whole peninsula actually forms a natural prison without walls. Escape was really difficult with many drownings, as most convicts, as you might imagine, couldn't swim. It was the only exit from the peninsula. And there were hundreds of escape attempts, but nearly all fail. We actually have a tour here that talks about all the escape attempts, such as one convict, Billy Hunt. He tried but failed to escape the Eagle Hawk Neck dog line because he dressed as a kangaroo and the dogs sniffed him out quite quickly. Others tried to escape by covering themselves in seaweed and wading through the water. But again, all failed. There's uh, a lot of, of human history on the island dating back to the, uh, the Putti Kualiti, who were home 
on Mariah for the tens of thousands of years. We've had uh, Dutch explorers, French explorers, English explorers, um, through to a number of uh, entrepreneurs that lived at the northern end of the island. We've had whalers and sealers, uh, in more modern times, farmers. And it's now a whole national park, so there is really nowhere else like it in, uh, in Australia. Because of invasion, none of those tribes actually survived invasion. So all of our people come from the North East tribe, which is Trualaway people. So we all represent from that nation. Um, however, the South East nation and the areas where we are today no longer carried on those families due to the European invasion of our people. So to be able to still stand on this land, even though uh, we don't have that link in family, we still are having that link in who we are as an Aboriginal community and really showing that when land is returned back to the Aboriginal community, that's when we can open these tourism ventures and teach people about that true history that sits on this land. So Mariah Island uh, was also home to a convict station um, back in the early 1800s. It was actually set up before Port Arthur, um, so it predates Port Arthur down on the Tasman Peninsula. Uh, and then again they set up probation station on the island in the 1840s. And they're actually still the most or the best examples of probation stations anywhere in Australia. So Darlington, the northern end of the island, is now a World Heritage convict site. The three sites we manage are all inscribed on the World Heritage listing. We're part of a serial listing that includes 11 sites throughout Australia and it's actually an honour and a privilege to be the custodian of a World Heritage site, to conserve it for future generations and to tell the story of why it's important you know, on a global stage. Well look, it goes without saying that Richmond is most um, well known for the wonderful um, historic bridge, which is Australia's oldest working bridge. It celebrated its bicentennial just recently. Well, it's quite a spectacular area, a Dunnally area. Yeah. I guess the background is it was a fishing village way back and there was an actual cannery that bring the fish, the fish in from the southern waters into Dunnally and they'd be processed here and then sent up to Melbourne. In the early 1900s, a canal was man-made uh, to allow sh boats and ships to be able to get to the east coast through the Dunnally township. So it saved a lot of time of going around the Tasman Peninsula to be able to go up the east coast. There was a, an Italian entrepreneur by the name of Diego Bernacchi. He set up Darlington uh, initially as a, as a bustling community, renamed it San Diego. Tried his hand at wine growing back in the early days before Tassie had its name for wine. He died before he ever saw his ventures uh, come to fruition. I think one of the, the most sort of important part of, of coming and staying in this region is really experiencing our outdoor um, activities, so getting physical out there in the environment. We're blessed with national parks on the peninsula and on the east coast. So that uh, includes boating, fishing, kayaking, surfing, lots of recreational activities out on the water and, and then also bushwalking and rock climbing is another great activity for this part of the world. So if you're coming to Mariah for the day, coming over on the ferry, you'll land at Darlington, the northern end of the island. Um, lots to see and do. If you wander around Benaki Creek, you're bound to see wombats, paddy melons, wallabies, um, and further out to the airstrip, always mobs of kangaroos out on the airstrip. Uh, there's 11 of our 12 endemic native birds living on the island, uh, including things like the beautiful, rare and endangered 40-spotted uh, pardalote, and of course, beautiful white-bellied sea eagles uh, and other raptors as well. So if you want to stretch your legs on the island, there's, uh, there's lots and lots of bushwalks you can do. Um, some of the shorter ones include around Darlington, the Fossil Cliff Circuit, Reservoir Cliffs, uh, or you can climb up a peak, Bishman Clark to the, to the north, Mount Moriah to the south, which uh, starting at sea level, quite a uh, sense of achievement when you, when you summit those peaks. And those looking for a sense of adventure when they visit Richmond and the Coal River Valley um, can find a, a wealth of unique um, different opportunities, starting from the fantastic um, hedge maze or timber maze at a maze in Richmond. Head out to, to visit the wildlife at Zudu or Bonarong Park. There's three golf courses in the area and also take a, perhaps a scenic flight over the full Coal River Valley region. Well, Dunnally and the Tasman Peninsula, of course, we've got lots of water around us, lots of surf beaches. We've got a, a good wave just off our coastline here off Marion Bay, which is called Barnyards. You've got so many great walking opportunities too. The Three Capes track um, in the Tasman National Park um, is definitely a highlight. 
as well as some really awesome day walks as well. Personal favourites are going down to Shippies, which is what the locals call it, but Shipstone's Bluff. Uh, that's a really awesome way to get down and see a world-class surf break. And also Crescent Bay is fantastic if you're interested in seeing Tasman Island from a distance. It's a super dramatic look back to the north of that island. So, If you continue beyond Dewtown, even on foot, then you'll find that there's a beautiful walk that will take you all the way up to Tasman Arch. You can check out the blowhole on the right day. It's just, it's just beautiful and a great way to stop um, in the area and really experience what we have to offer. So Tasmania is well known for its amazing produce and we're a bit famous for the paddock to plate um, connection to um, our food and the Tasman Peninsula is is, um, is absolutely a part of that. Um, so on your drive down for instance from Hobart all the way down to the southern end of the peninsula you're going to find a lot of local produce and, um, and eateries along the way. There's chocolate, wine, um, there's a new whiskey place in Dunalley. Um, so yeah lots of um, delicious things to try along the way. The beautiful oysters that come out from the Coal River. People are just so proud and um, love to work collaboratively with one another and promote this wonderful region. There truly is something for everyone. Most visitors, even those that plan the whole day, um, come across a surprise and delight moment, a little treasure, a little secret they didn't know about and um, go away re remembering those little secrets.